We're at my dad's house, and he's been cleaning up his garage. He said I could have this refrigerator, but I think where I live, it's actually illegal to have refrigerators just sitting in your backyard because people say it's too junky or whatever. They're, they're actually really good things to store. Like I could put wires and stuff in here to keep them waterproof. I was hoping to make like a, um, a little short documentary talking about how refrigerators work then I make like a mock-up one, similar, very similar to how the show The Secret Life of Machines was. I love that show. It's on the BBC, I think. Now, I think I'm just going to rip out the parts that I want and give the, the carcass to my stepbrother to scrap, because he scraps stuff and gets money for it. So I'll take out the pump and any coils and any wires, and I can use the pump to compress stuff. That'd be pretty cool. So, let's rip this thing open and see what we have inside. Oh, by the way, I'm going to add this in retroactively. Of course, I'm at my, my house right now. I believe the reason why this refrigerator didn't have any Freon was because of this stupid little injector valve thingy right here. I'm thinking this was an aftermarket little fitting that they put on there. If I, if I remember right, these are actually very leaky and only a good as a temporary fix. It's basically a thing that clamps it down onto the pipe and has like a little needle. The needle gets poked into the copper and that's where you can fill up the Freon from there because these usually don't have actual places where you can refill the Freon. Well then, the, the issue with that is that this is actually kind of leaky and so over time, over several years, all the Freon leaks back out. So that's why this thing didn't have any Freon. That's why whenever I popped that off there was really no pressure in there. This looks like to be the input, and this looks like to be the output. Okay. We'll cut this right here. Now we have several pins down here. Let's face it, you know you wanted me to do that. So is that the part you're placing? Yeah. Okay. Upper control arm. Yeah. Okay, finally there. Oh, what, what pressure did you put the air hose at? Yeah, it was like 30 PSI when oh. I used to use it.
Wow, that was easy. Yeah, but see, it's just spinning. Oh. I don't think it's actually. No, it's not spinning. That one dot right there is staying the same. It's not as bad as I thought. The main difference between an old vehicle and a new one. I'd still be fighting it on the old one. Wasn't the Dodge the one we had to have several parts just cut off with a blowtorch? Yeah. The older ones are a lot less to go wrong, but they're, you know, they're getting so old though they're hard to work on anymore because they're all rusted and stuff. And a lot of the replacement parts are either brand new and expensive or just as worn out Yep. from junkyards. Should have brought a pickle fork. What's I'm that? Still happy. Right. Drive it in there. Oh yeah, yeah, you do. Check your other drawer. Didn't you have the stuff over there? I don't want to push those holes. Yeah. You probably want a metal hammer for that, right? I'll try the other one first. Okay. That little one's look pretty good. You need to get yourself a nice little sledgehammer. Something with some mass behind it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. That's a great I didn't. Forgot about this. Is that it? Nah. No. It's just vibrating so it might pop off a couple times. Got that one off. One left. What was that? It's just losing uh, pressure. Oh, okay. Alright, uh, starting to spin on the inside. Let me get the channel locks, whatever. Turn a little bit. There. Ready? Yeah. That's a fucking stupid design. They don't they don't even need these round pieces on the end. I mean, there's really no reason to have that on there. Not sure, that's probably for the some of the alignment or I don't know why they made it that long. Is there any way to take off this? Yeah, but it's a pain though. Oh, okay. If it was easy, you take it off right in an instant. Yeah, this motor is totally seized. That's why it failed. Not counting, I'm thinking, I'm thinking there wasn't any free on it because whenever I popped the tube, nothing came out.
Looks like a thermostat right here. Here they go. And then I just twist it off. Doesn't look to be coming out at all. I'm just getting it broke loose. No, oh, okay. On your brass bar? Yeah. So what's the part that's worn out on it? Just the ball? Yep, this huh. should not move that easy. Yeah. Where's the other one? It's in that plastic bag. Oh, okay. Shouldn't those braces be touching? Ah, huh. there's oh. a space in there. Oh, okay. I was touching on the old ones. Huh? It was touching on the old ones. And when you pull it out, these were touching. You can see the marks. I remember whenever you were doing it, yeah, they see came that out. that one's got a spacer in it, though. It's different. Uh-huh. But you can yeah. see the marks where those were touching. Yeah, unless they oh, were well. wore out. Yeah, that could be. I don't know. Oh, here. Doesn't look like it's worn out. It just looks like it's... I mean, do you have to tighten it in super tight or something like that? Hmm. Maybe they just changed the design. You can do the rest of it now. I've had my fun. Almost got it all. Thanks.
These are abnormally large tires. Once I'm getting the R. Right, why? Huh? Why? Because it looks cool. Okay. Whatever floats your boat. Should this, should this be in the thing? No. Okay. It's a bad ass. Remember, whenever you say ass, you have to say with a Boston accent. Ass. Want the air hose? No, I'm tightening my hand. I don't like it. Oh, okay. And there we go. It's all on the back of the truck. Grease gun. There you go. Yeah. I'll just get all my crap out of the back of your truck. So at the end of the day, I got quite a bit of nice stuff. I got an, a container for electrolysis. It's the crispy uh, crisper tray or whatever it's called. Got some of the nice little bits and bobs. This nice sheet metal. This sheet metal will come in handy quite a bit. I can cut it to make whatever I need. Then over here, I got the pump, which works quite well. Let's plug it in. It's pumping air through there, so that's the output. This is the input. So that's all fine and good. Very useful for a silent air compressor or a hydrogen compressor. And over here we have a little heat exchanger. This will be great for if I ever do have a lot of extra high pressure gas, I can put it through here and then it'll freeze. That'll be pretty nice. I can make a cold chamber. And over here I have the hot exchanger. Probably if I do have a system to compress hydrogen and oxygen into tanks, I'll probably run the compressed air through that first to cool it down before it goes into the cylinder. I would really hate for the gas cylinders to get super hot. And I found this in my dad's garage. He had no idea he had this. It's just a crappy old well, not right old. It's from 2010. It's just a crappy drill that he had no idea he even had. So, I'm probably going to make a video where I upgrade this and, like, try to run the 7-volt motor off of, like, 30 volts or something. See what it can do. Probably make a battery for it, too. I'm already curious if it has lithium ion or nickel metal hydride or nickel, uh, nickel cadmium or what in there. I think it's really funny how they, they put that line on the bottom to make it look like a, it has a battery pack on the bottom. Oh, well. It's a, just a crappy one. But yeah, it's pretty awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!